Lustron Stories, Americans at Home. Lustron Corporation manufactured porcelain baked enamel coated all steel houses between 1948 and 1950 in Columbus, Ohio. Virtually everything, exterior siding, roof, interior walls, cabinets, and ceilings were made out of this material. The components were shipped to site in a specially designed trailer and assembled by local contractors. Lustrons were an ingenious attempt to deal with post-war housing shortages. About 2,500 were sold, mostly in the eastern U.S., but as far afield as Miami and Los Alamos. Roughly two-thirds are still being used today. Lustron Corporation was created in response to the idea that every American could and should be a homeowner. After the war, encouraging homeownership was federal government policy. The company was almost entirely financed by loans from the U.S. Reconstruction Finance Corporation. The design reflects mid-century modern architecture. The houses embody the modernist ideal of using industrial methods to bring affordable, quality housing to everyone. They were starter homes for young families. This was the stereotyped American family of the time, the people you would see on television in the 50s. White, employed, healthy, nuclear families. The homes were marketed as the house of the future. Primarily placed in the new suburbs and rural locations, the cost was competitive with a fully featured conventional home. While the company encouraged clustering of these homes, most were not. This distinguishes lustrons from Levittown and similar responses to the housing shortage. The heat used the ceiling as a radiator, not the best thermodynamics. Nevertheless, it avoided thicker walls to accommodate ductwork and allowed the house to be assembled on a simple slab. They are known for their cleanliness. Many of the owners talked about how they were great for allergies. This is both due to the porcelain-covered steel and because the heat did not depend on circulating air. These homes were the parents of the contemporary, modular, and prefab home industries. This industry needed the interstate highway system to thrive. Nevertheless, Lustron, which in its short life produced these homes, has to be seen as the first successful example of this approach to building a house. Everyone who lives in a Lustron has something to say about it. With the cooperation and encouragement of the Ohio History Connection, I set out to photograph the people living in these homes. The Ohio History Connection was embarking on a five-year project on the 50s. I was attracted to the project both as a study of the course of the American dream over my lifetime and the part of design that relates to the utility of the design as opposed to its aesthetics or beauty. I photographed the residents of these homes, the owners, and sometimes both. They were photographed outside the home and if they were comfortable doing so, inside. Each subject was asked to write a bit about their home. A wooden, large format film camera was used to do all of the photographs. While somewhat impractical because of the limited light, particularly inside the homes, and often, since it always seemed to rain outside, it did serve an important purpose in my relationship to the subjects. It really was used because it's kind of charming, to make the subjects feel more part of the project and more comfortable with the process. My hope is that these photographs show a certain amount of comfort, maybe even disregard for being in front of the camera, and gets closer to how they actually feel about their home. Roughly 120 portraits have been produced in 15 states. Relatively accurate databases were used to locate the homes. Letters were sent to the names of owners and residents that were found online. While not necessarily the most effective or efficient way, it did result in this project. Some of the residents chose to give me gifts. Copies of newspaper articles, in one case a Thomas Kincaid plate, books, and even a very beautiful Taylor brass barometer. Lustron Stories, Americans at Home, explores the course of the great American dream since that unique time immediately after the Second World War. At the same time, it looks at the history of prefab and manufactured housing that began with the Bauhaus advocacy of using industrial methods and materials to produce affordable housing. We can see design that is aesthetically pleasing and remains true to its original purpose 65 years later. For at least the last century, we believe that home ownership was a meaningful objective for both individuals and as public policy. Today, things are not so clear. The people in the photographs, all living in the same quirky homes scattered about the country, tell us something about the meaning of their homes. Together, the images bring us to fundamental questions of who we are and what we want to be. 